Carla here from Midnight Your Learning. Today I'm going to be going through how to answer this question for Othello. Um, and it's a really great question. So the more already changes with my poison, Iago, to what extent is Iago responsible for the tragic outcomes of William Shakespeare's Othello? So anytime we're answering a question, the first thing you need to do is underline the keywords of the question. Do not underline a group of words at once because you will never engage properly with what that individual or those individual words mean. And it really does give you a different understanding to be able to consider each word separately. And don't step over the words that are seemingly quite simple because if you do, I guarantee you won't end up using those particular words in your actual essay. You'll be like, oh yeah, I've already done that or that one's easy. And then you'll just forget all about it. But as many words as you can use from the question and integrate them, weave them throughout your actual response, the better your answer is going to be and the better it's going to address the question. So let's have a look at the words we can underline here. So the more obviously we know that's going to be Othello, um, already changes. Um, and so what we do when we're breaking down the question is think of a synonym for what that actually means. Now, this one's a little bit different because it's got a quote. Um, so actually, really what we're looking for here is probably more technique and meaning. And then we'll actually look at, you know, the to what extent that part of the question in terms of breaking down keywords. But in any case, he's saying the more already changes with my poison. So having read the play, we know that... Um, poison is a metaphor okay so when we're talking about my poison um you know and so think of like when they give you an actual quote think of it like you're analyzing um you know a comprehension task or like you know that's what you would do you would find the key techniques in that particular passage this is a pretty short quote so there's not a lot to do here but sometimes you can get a much longer extract and what you need to be doing is spending a little bit of time breaking down the actual techniques again and the meaning so here we've got a metaphor um, and that metaphor, which is when we think about metaphor, it's a comparison. So it's comparing Iago's um, actions and like his villainous behaviours. It's comparing them to a poison. So a poison is something that is going to be detrimental to an individual um, and possibly even fatal, right, which is certainly the case here. Um, so we've got a metaphor. So it's comparing Iago's villainous actions to um, something harmful, detrimental, or even fatal, um, you know, I the poison, you know, which is poison. Okay, cool. Oh, fix that one. Okay. All right, great. And then um, to what extent? Okay, so in terms of extent, that's just how much. Okay, so we'll just put here how much. Do make sure, I know that's a pretty simple thing, but do make sure you always say to what extent, so to a large extent, to some extent, you need to say the word extent in some form and then actually give a response to that. So to what extent is Iago responsible? Uh, all right, so what's the synonym for responsible? Accountable? Um, let's actually look it up. And this is a really good thing to do as well. So when you're actually practicing doing questions before you get under exam conditions, looking up synonyms for words is really helpful because it'll broaden your vocabulary on what sorts of questions they're going to ask you um, when you actually get into an exam. So what ends up happening is you've either looked up a synonym for the word that um, they ask you and therefore, you know, you know what then the word means that they ask you or they'll ask you one of those synonyms and then you know like it's the other word so um, broadening your vocabulary around the kinds of questions that they will ask you for particular topics or modules is really useful um, and something that you should practice doing and even looking up when you're um, initially doing questions so let's have a look for responsibility synonyms okay so blameworthy would probably use that in an essay but it does still kind of give you an idea of what they're asking answerable at fault I would say or to blame um so where were we here and so this when I'm doing this annotation in terms of the comments that's what you should be doing when you're handwriting in an exam so underlining putting a line writing the synonyms etc so to blame um accountable for um at fault okay um so to what extent is Iago responsible for the tragic okay so tragic 
um, terrible um, um, downfall, which is what the actual tragic like tragedy actually is. Deaths. Death. So now we've gone oh, like not only saying okay, this is what a tragedy is, but also what the tragedy is in this particular play. So you know, as you can see, like it's just a process of sort of brainstorming initially to get your head around the question, and this can take longer. Um, when you first start doing it. So sometimes people go, oh, this is too long. I don't have time to do this under exam conditions, but you have to make the time and you have to practice it before you get in because the more you do it outside of the exam, the quicker you'll get. And then obviously the faster you'll do it under exam conditions. Um, so these are some really good words, disastrous, calamitous, uh, calamitous, um, devastating. Oh, they're such good words that you can use in your essay. Okay, so um, calamitous. So we have there. Um, yeah, devastating. Devastating. All right, perfect. Okay, a bit quick on the typing here. Okay. All right, and then um, outcomes. So an outcome is a consequence, ramification. Um, that's pretty good. And that actually that links to the deaths there. Okay, good. So again, like, so see if we just underline tragic outcomes, you wouldn't necessarily get the same level of depth that you will if you look, you think about what tragic means, terrible, devastating, and then outcomes, consequences, ramifications. It's just it's a little difference, but it makes it makes um makes a world of difference when it actually comes to engaging well with the question. Okay, so um, what I would suggest is go and have a look at some of the past videos I've created on Othello because I've done a lot in terms of explaining how you want to bring the context, um, not only of the time that it was written, but also our current views and values um, into an exploration of this text. And this is such a good play for us to look at because, you know, race, racial prejudice is still such a um, big issue and something we're still really moving towards an idea of like understanding understanding, um, you know, what, um, you know, disadvantages minority groups have faced in the past and how we can not only understand those but move towards a much more compassionate understanding equal society. So when we're looking at this particular one, what you may have thought about doing for paragraph one, and so this is where you then take the question and then you think about how it links to the key ideas that you've explored. So the first thing I, I usually recommend talking about is, you know, how are these characters established and how is the context relevant here? So if you're thinking about, um, you know, going into looking at, you know, Othello, and you probably have mentioned Iago because he's really the, the beginning, he's the first person to speak at the play and he's pretty pivotal um, in terms of his you know villainous or Machiavellian character so if you're looking at that first paragraph and the idea that you know this is about a tragic hero so you've got Othello he's created this really heroic character which um a valiant and which is very unusual for the context because he is um you know a Moor or you know he is from Africa so there's this like unusual um you know esteem given to him and he's in this position of being a general um but of course when he actually then marries desdemona there's a lot of issues and a lot of racial um, prejudices that come out particularly from desdemona's father about the fact that you know that's a completely you know he's really angry about it and and you know right from that first you know very very a quote very fairly early on um about the there's a black ram topping your white you there's a, immediately this idea idea of like sexual depravity going on and the fact that idea that like Othello's violated Desdemona and she's like this innocent you and he is like this like sexually aggressive um man who's you know like stolen her or, or Brabantio's property which anyway is bringing up a whole other thing about gender um but what we're looking at here is like if we're talking about you know to what extent is Iago responsible for the tragic outcomes when you're you know starting off and and, and sort of thinking about where to start here um, look, I, I definitely think that Iago is, and you've got to figure out what your stance is going to be. So definitely it's clear that Iago has, um, you know, worsened a situation that 
like wasn't necessarily going to come about. So the fact that he, you know, goes straight to the Brabantio and, and kind of dobs on Othello, he's and then he's doing all this manipulation, like he's pretending he's on Othello's side and he pretends he's on everybody's side basically, um, but he's really is on on his own side. Um, so, but but has he actually caused the tragic outcome? Or did he just play into the stereotypes and expectations that were already prevalent during this particular era, um, particularly uh, towards Othello, the more who, um, you know, was already in an unusual position of prestige, uh, but, you know, would, would or did definitely suffer at the hands of a stereotype um, that he would eventually end up being someone who, um, you know, was going to, to ruin all of that, you know, and not be, and, and be like a, a you know, barbaric character um, where, you know, and, that, and that's what ends up kind of playing out that he, you know, murders Desdemona and he like was deceived the whole time and so forth. So, you know, I would definitely, I would personally argue that, you know, it was like Iago, um, you know, played into or that he did play some role for sure. Um, but whether or not he was fully responsible, I think there was a lot to do with context about that as well. And that um, I would say would be the place to go with this particular essay, um, this essay question. So, um, you know, starting off with like a topic sentence, you know, you want to go and, and think about how that this, these particular words, um, you know, match up with your stance on like what your approach to this essay is going to be. Okay, so if you've got the idea of this, um, ha him having this poison and like to what extent, so you could say maybe something like um, Iago's um, villainous actions. Gosh, I keep forgetting the eye there. Um, Iago's villainous actions, um, which have been metaphorically likened to a poison in the given quote. Um, do make him responsible for the tragic outcomes in um, of, and then say what those are. So actually this is probably more like what you're overall arguing than me. It's not just topic centers one. Um, do do give, make him responsible for the tragic outcomes of, um, you know, let's say Desdemona. Oh, actually, yeah, because what are those outcomes? That's the other thing too, like who, who who experienced tragedy? I mean, a lot of them do. Um, so maybe like um, death and murder. The play. So Iago's villainous actions, which have been metaphorically likened to a poison in the given quote, do make him responsible for the tragic outcomes of death and murder at the end of the play. However, However, these um, consequences or these, uh, let's say, calamitous or devastating um, could also be attributed to the racially prejudiced um, stereotypes or expect or values, that's a good word to use, um, attributed the racially prejudiced values of the Elizabethan era to a large extent. Okay, so we're saying, yes, he is responsible to some extent, but he was merely playing into those prejudiced values of the Elizabethan era to a large extent. Okay, and so then in, um, you know, topic sentence one, what you would be doing is establishing what Iago's poison is. Iago's poison, um, as well as the context of the Elizabethan era, particularly regarding the racial prejudices and stereotypes prevalent. Cool. Um, now, and then, and then you follow that through. So, okay, well, like, you know, his, and, and so his poison is going to be his deceit. 
Okay, so explore that, give another quote um, that follows that oh, there's plenty of those, I am not what I am and all that jazz. Um, so then you follow that through in terms of going, okay, so how is Iago being manipulated? Um, you know, how do we then see his tra tragic downfall happen as a result of what not only Iago provokes, but again, what was contextually evident there to begin with? And then what is that actual tragedy? What actually happens at the end? How does um, your fellow end up playing right into the expectations of him um, to be, uh, you know, not only a sexually lascivious, but also violent and, um, you know, murderous, which is, you know, him killing Desdemona. Um, and so another thing too that you may have wanted to consider talking about was the role of women, um, which I think is really a very interesting, um, there's a very interesting depictions of women in this particular play. And um, so one of the things that Iago also does, which could be linked to his poison, is he's manipulating that stereotype of women as well um, in relation to them being like deceitful and untrustworthy and um, needing to be kind of controlled by their, you know, respective male carers um so you know what ends up happening is that you know desdemona is like this really obedient woman but then she runs off and marries othello and you know and that's what she then has to kind of come and answer for in that initial court case um but you know iago plays into the stereotype that women can't be trusted which came from the sort of adam and eve like eve was the reason for why that adam and eve got kicked out of the garden because she was the one who like you know was tricked by the devil and got adam to eat the apple and then you know everyone got kicked out so there's always been this like long-standing stereotype of women being untrustworthy and so all iago does is he plays into that so he kind of is planting that seed of oh well you know um, a desdemona deceived her father so she's going to do that same thing to you um and then he sort of starts implementing these things like the handkerchief and symbols that show her to be unfaithful and untrustworthy so in a way like iago's poison at the end of the day is he's playing into two of these very very um ingrained stereotypes not only about you know um kind of colored or african um, men but also about women and that's what again like is he responsible for that well yes he's responsible because he plays into it but they were pre-existing before he came along so if you did want to talk about um the role of women then that's a really good way to go about it this particular question as well so hopefully that helps um and good luck with it